To make these plant steaks, we're gonna take the IOD molds and I put a little cornstarch in them first so that the clay comes out really easy. And we're going to just tap it off so you don't want any chunks of the cornstarch in there. And then I take the IOD air dry clay. You wanna make sure that you keep it sealed up because you don't want that stuff to dry out. And then you're gonna take just a small portion of it, put the rest back in the bag and push it into the mold. There's a micro rim, which is going to help you pull that excess clay off and get a perfect mold. You're gonna flip it over and just let the mold do the work. And uh, your little bee is just gonna pop right out of there. Might need a little help with your fingers. And uh, you got one done. Now you're gonna make a second one. I'll put this in a little fast mode for you. I took a banding strip, this is metal, and it's flat, very thin, and I just took a snips, and I snipped off, uh, I don't know, 12 inches, 13 inches or so, and uh, it's very bendable, that's what I want. So that's gonna be the center of this garden stake. Grab your tight bond wood glue, and put some wood glue on the back of the one B, doesn't matter which one, and I take my finger and I smear it all around and making sure that I get it all out to the edges and making also sure that there is plenty of glue on there. Then I'm gonna take the banding strip and I'm gonna place it in the middle of that bee. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more wood glue, adding it to the banding strip, making sure that it's straight. I put some of them a little crooked so it looks like they were flying. I made quite a few of these. And then you take the other bee and you just lay it right on top. Now, I don't know if this air dry clay is going to stand up in the weather for years and years and years, but for a few seasons, it's gonna look pretty darn cute. If you're concerned about the air dry clay not withstanding in the weather, you can do amazing resin. So I went ahead and I filmed this as well and I did one of each, clay and resin. There are two bottles. I keep one on the right, one on the left, and you're gonna make equal parts of each of these products. Then you're gonna pour them together into another container. I made the mistake of pouring one into the other one. That did not work very well. So make sure that you get another dish and pour them together at the same time into a separate dish. And then once you get all of that in there, I don't scrape them off, remember, right and left, in case I wanna make another one. And you're gonna stir. It's gonna turn cloudy at first, and then it's going to turn clear. It's also going to get very warm. Now you're gonna take that mixture and you're gonna pour it into your mold and it's very liquidy so it'll go into all the edges. If it doesn't, you can take a stick 
and force it around. And then you're gonna take that banding strip, it's metal, so it's got a little bit of a weight to it, and you're gonna put that right in the center. And I had to find something to, to hold that end up because it was just gonna flop right out of there. So I found a board and I placed the end of that metal strap, metal banding into one into the mold and the other one onto that board. Worked slick. Then I went ahead and I used up some more of this resin, so I made a seashell. When this stuff dries, it's gonna to start to get cloudy. You can see this one is really starting to dry up and, and firm up while I was putting that steak in there. So while they were drying, they take about 10, 15 minutes. While they were drying, I made a few more. And uh, the one is done. I will show you in later in this video how they come out. After they're dry, you can feel it, make sure they're cold, and you can just flip this mold and it pops right out of there. It is resin, so it's very, very tough material. It's not going to break. It had a little bit of a flash on it, so I took a knife while that resin was still a little bit on the, on the setting up side and it came right off, came right off that stake. So that's another thing, you can trim them if you need to. There it is, this is the resin one. And now we will make the other side. You'll do the same thing, mix up this resin, gotta make the second side. You're gonna pour it into that B, and once you get it all in there, um, I made enough so I could make the B and the butterfly at the same time. And then I had extras, and so I just used it wherever I could find one that I wanted to make.
When they start to set up, you can see they're turning white. I went ahead and laid the dry one right on top. I had to bend this metal stake a little bit so that it would lay correctly in there, but you're gonna, what it's gonna do, it's gonna mend itself right to that one. So that is still on the, on the tacky side and you just lay it right on the top of there, kind of push it in just so they seal themselves together. There you go. Now you have a two-sided, I kind of trimmed it off a little bit around there because I had some ooze out. So when it's a little on the cool side, you can trim them out. But we have a two-sided B. There's the little tiny B. And uh, the two-sided B, just pop him right out of the mold. And really there is no difference between air dry clay or this amazing resin. Both of them worked for me and I'm not sure which one will last longer. I painted the bees with cake batter first, and then I took liquid sunshine and I just gave them a little highlight. I was laying them down on a board, and, and these are, one is mold and one is resin, or I'm sorry, one is air dry clay and the other one is resin. So they both basically look the same. I think the air dry clay paints a lot nicer than the resin. When I used the liquid sunshine, I used it as a highlight. So I dipped my brush in the liquid sunshine and just hit the high spots of these bees, letting some of that cake batter come shining through.
The butterfly I painted in Old 57. Nothing like a pretty teal butterfly. And then I accented him with fire starter. I use Cowgirl Coral on this Old 57 on the seashell. They go really nicely together. If you are in any need for DIY paint or IOD molds, please head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com and I'll ship them right to your door. After the paint was dry, everything gets a coat of Big Top. Why I did Big Top is I think it's gonna last a little bit longer outside than the clear wax. So I chose to do the Big Top. You can use an exterior sealer if you'd like, but like I said, these aren't gonna last forever and I'm okay with that.
Now to give them depth, I added black wax, and to the old 57s, I added shipwreck wax. And they got a lot of depth. After you put your black wax on, it goes into all those creases. Just, then just take a soft cloth and wipe off the top and the black stays in those creases. See the difference between one done and one not done? Way cool. And now, because everything in Old 57 is better with copper accents, I added a little pennies from heaven onto the butterfly and the seashell. It gave them a nice shipwrecked look. I hope you enjoyed this quick crafting with Connie. And if you need any products, please visit thepaintedphotographer.com and I will ship them directly to your home. If you're local, go on into Foreman's Farm Home and you'll find all of these products right there. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy painting.